Eric Moab with Mother.com. Market's been trading for about one hour, and this is the weekend version for the weekend of September 16th and September 17th, 2017. This is going to be subscriber only content. So let's take a look at the charts here. We are showing the market trading at the highs for the day. So why not take a look at the charts? And in this video, I'm going to try and give you some ideas to act on or to consider. So let's get to it. Let's begin with the Nasdaq weekly. We can see that we still, or let's say the market did reclaim the level back above the buy point we've been watching. And so as long as the Nasdaq is holding above 6.3, 87.75, this market continues to be very bullish. That's a simple way of looking at the market. And as you've seen from previous videos, there's a line going back to the highs of 2014 on the NASDAQ. And if we draw a line, pretty much should be going back to the highs. But what we see here is that this line is has been good guidance, give us an entry at the beginning of 2017. And since then, it's been acting as support. And so this is another way of looking at the market that as long as the NASDAQ is holding above this line, we continue in a market that is net net in a bullish uptrend. Now, of course, at some point, if we break below that line, that's when we can really expect the market to be due for major pullback, at least in the short term or maybe major highs. Now, if we take a look at let's take a look at the daily for the NASDAQ. And we can see that the level to watch on the daily is this level right here. And let me give you that number. As long as the NASDAQ is holding above that number, then that's a good quality breakout. And on the daily, it is 6422.75, which goes back to this daily closing high. Now, right now, as the market is trading, I believe we might be looking at a market that is close to the intraday highs on this options expiration day and on the daily for the nasdaq we should also we continue seeing this line here which is rsi on the daily showing that we've been tagging this line and stalling during the most recent movement to the highs there take a look at the hourly for the nasdaq and we can see at the highs of the day with about four hours to go. The market is still showing that yes, it is making an improvement to intraday highs, but there is a line connecting RSI highs. So this creates a situation of negative divergence where the technicals were not following through as the market was making this intraday high. Generally, what that means is that we can expect a pullback of some sorts. Now also, so there's a top side resistance as of right now, unless the market can clear that line, but there's also bottom side support. So we are stuck in this wedge. Ultimately, the next major move from now is either with a breakout to push the market beyond current levels or with a breakdown to take the market lower in the short term. We take a look at the 30 minute chart for the NASDAQ and we can see the same type of situation. RSI resistance at the intraday highs of the day. So that should be stalling the market. And we can also see that there's a line connecting RSI lows on the 30 minute chart. So we are stuck in a wedge. So ultimately, we either get a breakout above this line for a move higher, or we get a confirmation of resistance now and ultimately a break below that, which takes the market lower. Also, Intraday, just for the sake of looking at this intraday, we take a look at the NASDAQ, we can see that intraday, it has come and is being rejected when trying to hold above RSI 69.1. That means that this is short term high for now. Let's switch gears here and take a look at the Dow. And we can see that on the Dow, two things are playing here and are bullish. Number one, to keep it very simple, we are seeing the Dow right now holding firmly above the previous weekly closing high. So as long as the Dow continues to hold above 22092.81, 2, 
which is the close of this week right there as long as the Dow is above that price this is a quality breakout so as long as it is above that price that's a quality breakout it means that the bulls are firmly in control and have intention of moving the market higher it's the same level we can watch should the market come and break below that that would be a bearish signal right now we are also looking at the rsi which is trading above 69.1 which is a sign of strength also so as long as we have a price breakout rsi on the weekly above 69.1 this continues to be a good market to favor the upside and the best way to characterize this is to take a look at this movement here we move above 69.1 we stay above that level until we break back below it which is if at higher prices so this all movement was with the rsi above 69.1 we do the same thing and we move back above 69.1 we stay above it until we break back below it which is this movement on this week right there and throughout that period when the RSI was above 69.1 we can see the market went on a nice run so here this is the big takeaway as long as the RSI is above 69.1 you have to favor the market for an upside move if it fails to hold above 69.1 if prices fail on a breakout level then that's going to be the signal visually that the market is due for a correction on the hourly we see that the Dow continues to hold above 69.1 which means that as long as it is above 69.1 even hour to hour it still favors upside momentum same thing can be said about the 30 minute chart for the Dow we continue holding above 69.1 on the 30 minute chart which means that 30 minute to 30 minute the market should still have some remnant of upside momentum but if we take a look at the five minute and I'm only giving you five minutes just because of intraday considerations right now we see that on the five minute the Dow is coming back to hit topside resistance so that would also suggest that we've seen the highs for Friday's trading that is what it suggests so really no need to chase some of these stocks that are moving to the upside intraday based on some of these observations if we take a look let's take a look at the Dow transports on the daily so go to the daily and just want to show there's a line connecting RSI highs if you want to draw it this way so that is showing resistance that's one way of looking at it the other way is to take a look at where it broke down recently which is this break we break below there come off the highs and now we are coming to test that level so that is already showing us that the next trend here as long as those two resistance lines are being respected by the market the chances are the next swing trade as far as the transports are concerned is lower which might suggest that let's not be surprised if the general market itself goes on to pull back from current levels we can also see a similar type situation on the SPX daily there's a line connecting RSI top side and we've hit this line just like we saw on the Nasdaq so as long as this is showing resistance if the market is unable to move above this line it suggests that net net we should not be surprised if the market pulls back based on this resistance line it's another way of saying that the bulls need the market to break out above this line if there's going to be a continuation of this move and there's also the argument of negative divergence and improvement to price highs but the RSI is not following through it's making a lower high that negative divergence could very well be this the setting the stage for a pullback let's take a look at the SPX weekly and if I go back about three years so we can see why it's been responding well just like with the Nasdaq there's a line going back to 2014 let's do it like that in other words we can see that we broke out here 
we've been using this line for support right there uniform activity support we went below the line and back above it with uniform action for that re-entry and recently we went below the line back above it for that re-entry and again we touched the line found support and here we are back above that line and recording new highs right now so for the s p 500 that looks good as long as that line is holding and there's another line and we can draw it like this so a couple of weeks ago we came back and tested this line it held market's been acting well since let's take a look at two year back to the two year weekly and the level to watch here now that we are above the previous all-time weekly closing high for the s p 500 that becomes a point of reference and the level to watch there is two four seven six point eight three as long as it is above that price which is this weekly closing high that remains a market that is still bullish and given that price if we break below that at some point in the coming weeks that's going to be a sell signal in the short term for sure if we take a look at the five minute chart for the SPX we we can see why we are coming off the highs set a couple of minutes ago because we are coming back to test this RSI break we hit that at the highs of Friday session suggesting that as long as that's the case we are looking at a market that has already seen intraday highs but now we come to the big conclusion which is best seen on the monthly chart and this holds true for the SPX the Nasdaq and also we can consider this to be true for the Dow and it's a simple reasoning here we moved above 69.1 on the monthly here in 2013 we stayed above that for the most part outside of this short term blips until we moved back below it which is sometime here you can call it somewhere there but that was good enough for a two-year rally net net in other words yes we got pullbacks but they were shallow so we've been doing the same thing in 2017 market's been holding above 69.1 we continue holding above 69.1 which means yes within this phase we are going to get pullbacks but they're going to be shallow it's another way of saying while the market is above 69.1 on the monthly market should be sideways at worst bullish at best now let's take a look at let's take a look at xhb on the weekly this is reason why i'm showing you this is last week they were seemingly breaking out and i had some doubts based on what i discussed in part two of last weekend's market analysis video here we can see now this looks like a failed breakout and we can see that now we see that this is confirming some type of resistance either top side resistance or back test of this break and the market is coming here responding to that line or uniformity line and showing resistance that's the xhb home builder etf take a look at the iyr which was breaking out last week looked very promising but there was reason to suspect that that was a trap and i still believe it continues to shape up as a trap based on this break of that high essentially this is where we've been stalling or the iyr has been stalling for 2017 and staging swing trades to the downside pull back resistance here pull back resistance there pull back resistance pull back we get resistance pull back and we get current resistance so as long as we are finding it difficult to move above this line we can logically expect that the next swing trade is down otherwise if the market wants to take this sector of the market higher it would have to clear this line to the upside let's take a look at that dollar chart as before i go into commodities so we see this week the dollar is doing its best to move back up about 0.53 in the on the current daily chart we can see that this is where the dollar has been struggling 
based on RSI top side resistance. You can draw it like that. Over the last two, three days, we've come and tagged that level. The dollar is pulling back. Now take a look at the hourly. The hourly is showing that it could be pulling back into a day to finding support based on this line here. So given that the dollar continues to be within range of finding long-term support, now either it is, and I've been saying this for many weeks and months, either this is a break point based on this entry this RSI movement began this explosive run in the dollar and what the dollar is doing is coming back after many years and testing this breakout or this entry which was successful so ultimately either we are truly breaking down below the blue line or this is just games and tricks before the dollar ultimately comes and find uniform support here on the line and we see a recovery in the dollar. If the dollar recovers, we know it's going to put some downside pressure on commodities. And if you recall, if we take a look at gold by way of the GLD, last week it looked like gold was seemingly just bound to go to the moon and beyond. But there was suspicion that this is where it could stall and it's stalling exactly I guess where we thought it could stall and one of the reasons we can see this on the monthly let's take a look at a long-term monthly chart for the GLD and what we see on the monthly is there is an argument that I've been pretty much trying to bring across is that we are coming back to test the break of that high in 2000, late 2012 and so until we show that we can break out above this line this becomes a tricky spot. So as long as we are down for the month, this could be confirmation that it is coming back to show resistance here. This is where it stalled last year when everybody was turning bullish on gold. We could see that it was coming back to test that level. We took the other view of it, that gold was gonna pull back. It took many, many months, but ultimately that was a correct view. It pulled back. So either we can get a breakout above this line and gold does well, or we get con continuation of this resistance and we get another month to month pullback as far as gold is concerned. And I personally lean to gold struggling right now even based on the Dow Jones US mining index. And we can see that what we were looking at last week seems to be correct in that we were coming back to test this break off the highs of 2016. And as of right now, we've gone above the blue line and back below it with uniform action. It's the uniform action that we can, we find visually giving reliable signals. So that shows that there's potential, as long as it is below the blue line, there's potential for continued downside action as far as the miners are concerned. Take a look at a long-term picture for the US gold mining index. And here we can see that if you figure out where we broke down of major highs in 2011 you go back to this break of the highs there take that level and draw our uniformity resistance line if you're new to this concept of uniformity there should be a link in the description of the video or just search my videos on YouTube under the title of uniformity there should be a long playlist explaining this in detail but here we have uniform action above the line back below it for the highs of 2016 and for 2017 we seem to be coming to hit that line and as of right now we are confirming resistance so as long as this is the case we can see that we have to continue expecting lower prices based on resistance on this blue line right there and again you can see it there and I just draw the line again and you can see that is definite resistance at this point in time so as long as that's the case we have to assume that it is telling us to prepare for continued downside action as far as commodities are concerned now let's take a quick look at silver by way of the ETF SLV 
go back to last weekend's video, we were talking and discussing the idea that well, all we were doing was coming back to test this break of last year's highs and just draw a line from there, simple uniformity resistance line. Anytime we get resistance with uniform action on this line, we know it is telling us to expect a move lower. Resistance with uniform action, we expect a move lower. Resistance with uniform action, we expect a move lower. If we take a look, let's take a look at USO, which is a way of tracking crude oil. And we, get, we go to the daily. And the daily this week was doing its best to break out above 10.28 but did not successfully or as of right now has not successfully been able to do so but a breakout above 10.28 would be bullish so we need to continue watching this a breakout would be bullish failure to break out would definitely be bearish don't forget we are coming back to test a level that has been problematic for crude oil you most recently we went above the line and back below it off those highs resistance here off those highs uniform activity rejection off those highs with resistance here off those highs and even here we see double top on this line which is this highs there so right now we are coming back to test that i'm not co i'm not confident that this is where it moves higher but if it can clear 10.28 that will be bullish now this would be similar to wtic moving above 50.17 in fact if we take a look at WTIC and this chart does represent yesterday's close does not reflect today's action its end of day data we can see yesterday there was a genuine attempt to break out above 50.17 but as of right now this has been unsuccessful so it seems like an early signs of failed breakout it would have to trade above 10 50.17 if this is going to be a successful move higher and the reason why i was saying we need to watch this if it breaks out above 50.17 one can play the upside is because there's some flat moving average right there if it can clear this recent daily closing high at 50.17 that might suggest that there's genuine expectation that ultimately we get the crossover where the 50 day crosses above the 200 day and the only way that can happen is with a price rapid price expansion that's why we need to watch 50.17 for a potential breakout if it breaks out above 50.17 or or similar to uso breaking out above 10.28 that would be a buy signal but let's go back to that USO chart, show you on the hourly. That on the hourly, pretty much what we've been doing here, which might explain the current failure to break out, is we are coming back to test this break of the highs of early 2000 and early August. And we've been stalling on this level, as you can see. Well, I can do it a little bit lower. There you got it. So, rejection rejection of the highs there so hour to hour i think this is where it stalls now let me show you one other chart and it's the chart for natural gas on the daily we have what looks like topside resistance All right as long as we are seeing the topside resistance it suggests that there's another commodity that another commodity that is pointing downwards so I would say the following, the following ETFs, which are bearish ETFs, could benefit. We got SEO, could benefit. And so there could be a potential move higher for SEO. Take a look at KOLD. If natural gas is giving us that resistance line, KOLD could be set for a swing trade to the upside. I'm just giving you ideas based on what we are looking at. You can take the more aggressive short natural gas ETF, DGAZ. Remember, it's very volatile, so you got to be careful here. You got to make sure you have an exit strategy or a stop somewhere. 
showing support there maybe the next swing trade looks like to, it is higher or you can take a look at ERY a way to play natural gas or no, a way to play energy if you suspect energy is poised to go lower so this could be on the men's on the rebound after a strong pullback here and we can now all this will not work if if WTIC breaks out above what was it 50 point one seven these ideas will not work if USO breaks out above 10.28 these ideas will not work the other instrument you can watch is DUG for a rebound if crude oil is going low or you can take a look at DRIP now all these are ways to benefit if crude oil continues to fail to break out above 50.17 here we can see that it's coming back to test this entry of the lows there so you can use this as an as a reason to expect a bounce based on what we've been discussing here now speaking of commodities if you take a look at Thursday's video there was a discussion on copper let me show you another instrument that also is showing similar type possibility of resistance and it is the steel sector showing that it's coming back to hit that level just like we saw with, with the miners and if you take a look at the monthly chart for steel sector and this is a SLX let me zoom in we can see that essentially we are coming back to test this level here on the monthly so failure to hold above the blue line might suggest that the next major trend might be down otherwise bulls have a chance if they if they can engineer a move above the blue line that would be instrumental for a quality breakout right now it looks like it is still within it is not down for the month it's positive for the month but still within resistance here so we have to watch this closely either for a breakout confirmation which would be bullish or for confirmation of resistance which would be bearish now i would lean to resistance based on the other mining charts we've looked at in this video now speaking of commodity let's take a look at a sector that is seemingly breaking out dw it's the dow jones renewable energy equipment sector and this is the weekly now if we take a look at the 34 month chart so 34 months of data on a monthly chart we can see that there's a price is coming close to breaking out which would be bullish of course and this is a representation of the solar sector more importantly there's a possibility and the opportunity here that the RSI with a quality breakout would go on to move to three-year highs we see that one of the MACDs is already trading at three-year highs so definitely meets a minimum requirement that's why it's worth watching this space for a potential breakout because if it can clear this RSI levels and the price resistance levels which is the close of this month that right there two months ago if it can clear that level there's a possibility of an acceleration in prices so what I would do is and by the way I didn't know you might have noticed there are some stocks BLDP is one that I noticed this week was moving so stocks like this are already showing momentum so let's let's watch the space so what I can do is in terms of ideas the first one is FSLR and we can see here on a weekly chart it is as of right now breaking out but I'll like to take a look at the monthly and we can see that the monthly and this is the price I would use is based on this monthly closing high from two months ago so as long as it is holding above that breakout level of 39.41 going back to this monthly closing high it can be a breakout candidate now of course for it to be successful it would have to clear this level but it's getting close to that I would still consider it a breakout as long as it's trading above 39.41 and the monthly 
again the MACDs are not optimum so yes we can see here that pretty much does not meet the minimum requirements we look for but if the solar space is moving higher 39.41 would be where I would watch next one in sharing ideas in the same space is DQ this is the monthly chart now here we can see that it does meet the minimum requirements of the technical parameters we see that the RSI is at three year highs so that's great and the, one of the MACDs we only need one of the MACDs to be at three year highs so it is breaking out with quality uh, technical parameters there we take a look at the weekly and we can see that we can use the recent weekly closing high as a breakout level and the level that it needs to stay above now is it needs to defend 27.60 in other words now that it is above 27.60 it needs to stay above that one can own it as long as it is above and remains above 26 27.60 the other one is and again not the best in terms of the setup of the monthly chart CSIQ and you can see there's a, an attempt to break out here on the weekly let's go to the monthly see what the quality of the monthly chart looks like and I would use this level here the monthly closing high from a month ago and the price there is 16.97 excuse me 16.94 so as long as it is above this price I would watch it and again here we see some deficiency because the monthly is not at three year highs MACDs are not at three year highs the assumption here is if the solar space is to do well some of these stocks might still have some momentum but they but their FSLR and CSIQ don't meet the minimum requirements which again is a reason to be suspicious of the sector itself so make sure if you do take you know the ideas and own part of the solar space or any of the ideas here just remember you want to own them as long as they are breaking out as long as they are above their buy points why because we can see here that pretty much the solar space has been coming back to test this break off the highs of 2015 and we are still within confirmation of resistance so this could be still a trap trapping people to go along before ultimately this confirmed resistance so that's why I say make sure you have stops as you should always do because of hidden resistance now let's take a look at some change here take a look at some Bitcoin ideas and we can see the highs here of 1050 it's pull back below 500 that's a 50% drop in the last three weeks or so for GBTC problem here the stock has such low volume as of right now the volume for the day is at uh, well, I guess the volume is at 81,000 but what I want to show you here is after being smacked down strongly here I want to show you why somebody can use this as a reason for a bounce entry there was an entry there in September of 2016 which was the lows and it has gone on to eventually trade substantially higher substantially that's understating the substantially part of it but if you use this line for re-entry you would have had a chance of owning this during pullbacks uniform activity support for that re-entry uniform activity support for that re-entry uniform activity support for that re-entry and now it has bounced on the line with uniform activity support so right now even though it's up about 17% for the day 20% it is showing support on this line so one can take this bounce as a reason to re-enter the idea the other one is a micro penny stock in the same space and it is BTSC similar type consideration here pretty much there was an entry here of the lows there is this breakout we take that information and draw our uniformity support line anytime we bounce on this line with uniform action we take the idea that it's gonna bounce there was a re-entry there and now uniform activity support here suggesting that they might be this is where it recovers it might not be in a study that the next it goes straight up 
it might be sideways up sideways but ever ultimately as long as we are seeing support on this line that means that one can take the trade to the upside and see whether there's some profits to be taken with this support that is being shown with uniform activity bounce so one more time let's do this so we can see visually our our analysis this was the perfect entry you use the stock to tell you what how to approach it and then there's a line here and what we are suggesting is that just as we had good double bottom support here for our re-entry we see support here as long as this line is holding we anticipate that over time it's gonna see a recovery bounce and that's all we want to see is an opportunity to be part of any bounce let's switch gears again take a look at wb if you're not aware this has been one of the best performing stocks over the last 12 months Whee! right it's in the internet commerce space i believe the other one is s a s i n a strong moving charts in fact if you take a look at the monthly charts they're even prettier it's a monthly chart view for s s i n a w b has also been on the leadership and i believe we can even add one more which is baba and baba if you recall was a breakout candidate for us or for mother.com subscribers as it broke out above this level here it too has gone on a nice fantastic run so the stock i want to sensitize you to is and you always have to ask yourself how come it hasn't moved with the rest of the group but well we just have to consider a breakout maybe to be trying to play catch up so the best thing to do is set an alert if sohu breaks out above 56 point eight three that would be a reason to go along so set an alert anything above fifty six point eight three would be a quality breakout that breakout would be quality why because we see that at that particular point if it breaks out RSI would be moving to three year highs MACDs are already trading at three year highs so the MACDs look good so no problem with the technical parameters all we need here is a price breakout above 56.83 let's take a look at another text take name nvda wow now this has been a tough one to try and short right let's be frank with each other now that it is back above 69.1 it now becomes a momentum candidate to the upside that's just how the game goes and to illustrate the illustrate the point movement above 69.1 keeps it higher until it moves back below it here movement above 69.1 again means you hold it until it moves back below 69.1 this is just a weekly wait till i show you the monthly so you hold it as long as the RSI is above 69.1 we've seen that with the S&P 500 from 2013 to 2015 movement back above 69.1 on the weekly means you hold it until it moves back below it which is sometime well let me get that right sometime here all of those stays above 69.1 were bullish periods all of them so we know that as long as the RSI is back above 69.1 that's bullish we also know that if it is rejected if it moves back below 69.1 that means it loses momentum now the monthly is a uh, what can i say picture perfect all right moves above 69.1 i mean this is hard to believe but here in the 30s and on the monthly the monthly chart says you continue holding it why good because it is still above 69.1 
right this is just as remember it's called relative strength strength index RSI the strength is what is being measured here and the stock becomes very strong when it stays above 69.1 the higher the longer the more you just get this type of reaction it's a good lesson for all of us take a look at the daily here and on the daily we can use the recent daily closing high as a level to watch as long as it's breaking out that's good that's a quality breakout and the level there is 172.20 as long as it's breaking out above that level it is a buy having said that if the stock drops back below 172 0.20 it becomes a sell why well you can take the other side of the trade because of the failed breakout number one and then number two right now there is some signs that it is coming back to test this recent break so that could also be another reason to start considering potential for resistance if we take a look at the hourly we can see that the hourly well, the hourly just exploded above this resistance line that I was watching earlier. Bang! Well, can't argue with that, right? That's a good quality move. And also, as long as the RSI on the hourly is above 69.1, it still has upside momentum hour to hour. So pretty much the best thing to do here is use 172.20. Anything above 172.20 is a good reason to own the stock. It's a great reason to own the stock. And failure to hold above 172.20 would be an okay, not the best reason to, to sell a stock that is showing very strong momentum on the monthly. But failure to hold this level, if it moves back below 172.20, one can take the other side and go short, especially if we see confirmation of resistance on this line. All right. So let me draw that line one more time this line right here if you see resistance if it calls back below that line and if it trades below 172.20 that's your cue to go short otherwise right now it's a buy it's a buy it's a buy it's a buy as long as it is above 172.20 and we know that it is an absolute powerful stock based on the monthly chart which continues trading above 69.1. In fact, RSI is trading in the 90s. Don't be scared. It just shows that it is strong. Remember, relative strength index, strength, strength, strength is what we are measuring here. Now, I want to conclude with taking a look at a couple markets and I'm going to go with the FTSE and go to the monthly chart so it's closed for the week just want to show you that this monthly chart continues to be a little bit on the bearish side so don't forget that this is there's there are some markets worldwide that don't look as sharp there was a break here in late 07 which began the major drop in 2008 and this has already been confirmed as resistance a couple of months ago all right also on the FTSE this past week we saw a break of a trend line so we can see there's a trend line break in fact not a trend line break there was a break earlier confirmation of resistance now it is breaking below that line not a good sign right it just means that we should be sensitive to the US markets catching this type of a move lower unless unless it is coming back to test this lows there's an RSI movement here that begins this recovery leg and maybe it is just coming back week to week to test that line so that's something I'm watching for also there's another line going from this lows here from February of 2016 there's another line it could still come back and show support on either this line 
or even lower on this line. So just something I'm watching. In other words, it's always good to see what's going on around the globe. And on the daily here, we see, you know, a decent drop. On the hourly, RSI is suspect. There was a line showing support here, potential for bounce, but we broke below that. You know, but we, we watch that weekly chart for potential support. The reason why I say that is we take a look, let's take a look at the Canadian market. And we are about to conclude this. So Canadian market. Uh, so there's two schools of thought here. There's this line. Going back to the lows here. Off the, that was a good entry. Market would go on to have a nice run. And over the last, let's call it, three four five months we've been bouncing on this line and showing support so that's the weekly as long as that line is holding the weekly has a chance of recovering take a look at the hourly and the hourly is where I think to be consistent with the US markets it is showing that it is back to resistance on the hourly so it could be that the US markets are also potentially coming back to show resistance We've seen resistance on the NASDAQ daily, S&P 500 daily, Dow Transports daily. They would have to clear these types of resistance if there's more upside. And let me conclude the video here with the current market trading. And so there you have it. The video has been recorded for almost an hour. Um, anyway, so let me stop right there. We'll see how the market closes for the day. And to conclude here, we, we continue seeing that the NASDAQ did make a push to intraday highs. But this came at the expense of the technicals. As long as we are showing that uniform activity rejection. And as long as we are seeing that negative divergence. And the fact that we moved to new highs. RSI did not move above 61.8. And this is the NASDAQ hourly. Suggests that the next swing trade or intraday move lower. Or short term move for the markets in my opinion continue to be that markets pull back as we begin as we end this friday session end the week and begin the new week otherwise those are the ideas i'll keep scanning i have lots of ideas that are just uh, waiting for confirmation of breakouts and things like that otherwise if i have more ideas i shall be sending them to you eric muadud muadud.com as always good luck peace and blessings e i see s Mwah.